Imagine you woke up to discover a massive cyber attack on your country. All government data has been destroyed. Healthcare records, birth certificates, social care documents have all been exterminated. The transportation system is not working, traffic lights are blank, immigration is in chaos, and life as you know it has halted. Life as you know it has been reduced to a simple error message, which none of us can ignore. Now, this might sound like a fanciful idea, like it's a nightmare that will never become true, or reality. However, when countries declare war on one another in the future, this is the type of warfare cyber experts are expecting. Computers will replace assault rifles. Software viruses will replace artillery fire and aircraft. And this will be the era in which a terrorist that's about to kill hundreds of lives of innocent people with a phone that will deactivate the bomb. And a cybersecurity expert standing 100 miles away could disactivate the phone and therefore disactivate the bomb with just one press of a button. Overload the circuit, overcharge the battery, no more phone, no more terrorist, and no more terrorist attack. Now, this is the time period that is emerging. And these are the key challenges of the 21st century to overcome cybercrime and to overcome cyberterrorism. December 2014, November 2015, May 2016, all dates of attacks done by the most wanted cyber group in Europe, Cobalt. Since then, they have stolen over 150 million euros from ATMs in Berlin, Rome, Paris, and Madrid. Now, network outages, hacking, computer viruses, all range from inconvenience, from disabling our computer games or deleting chats, to life-threatening situations from stealing information of theft or theft of credentials. Now, there are two forms, or two broad categories of cybercrime. One, sabotage, phish emails, bogus messages, which are easy, easily recognizable because one, the prince of Nigeria doesn't ask for money, and two, the lack of grammar is evident in these emails. And the other form is data breaches, either disabling infrastructure or deleting information. And we live in an increasing the networked world, from personal banking to daily lives. And hardware is too easy to protect. You can just lock it up, buy a spare, or chain it to your desk. However, software poses more of a problem. It can exist in more than one place. It can be traveled around the world in seconds. And it can be stolen or deleted without any of your knowledge. Take an example, Edward Snowden. We all know what this man did. He revealed personal documents or classified documents to the public from the NSA and the CIA. And to this act, there are two sides. One that states that he was protecting the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution, the right to have privacy. And the other side, that states that in order to, for there to be national security, government surveillance must be guaranteed. And this is on a national level. If we increase to an international level, well, Taking another example of Edward Snowden, he stated in 2006 that China has stolen the F-35 plans for their J-31 fighter jet, which is still currently active today. And this saved them millions of dollars and many years of investigation. Now, for a more alarming fact, Russia and China have an entire emergency prepared plan for any given moment at any given time at any given country. Take the United States, for example. Well, when they attack, there were two stages to this attack. The first one, a cyber attack. It will disable the entire country, just like they did in Estonia in 2007. Your house is run by computer. Water, heating, electricity, the car. The fact that an airbag can pop up when you're in a fatal crash is controlled by computer. When you call 911 and there's another person at the end of that line ready to assist you, it's controlled by computer. And military equipment, from missiles to jets to drones, everything is controlled by computer. So in Estonia, when a computer was terminated, so was life. And the second stage to this attack would be an amphibious attack with their high-tech techno high weaponry and equipment and military aircrafts and drones. Some experts state that 
the United States would be left with the same resources as our great grandparents or grandparents in the 1930s or 1940s. You couldn't be able to call your mom to see if she was okay. You could not be able to post anything on social media and see if your friends were okay. As James Clapper stated, the former FBI director, Russia has been assuming more of a cyber posture by increasing their cyber espionage operations abroad. And this is a clear proof of one. Now, internet history. Well, supercomputers were created and wealthy companies, prestigious universities, and government agencies owned them. However, in the 1980s, personal computers were created and there's a fast development and rapid spread all over the world. Well, currently people are texting, Skyping, transferring money, playing games, and some are depending their, depending their educational, social, and, and economic lives on them. And this major enhancement of our lives comes at a big price, security, because vulnerability will never go away. The very architecture of the internet was constructed with big flaws. Between 2004 and 2014, over one billion personal records were stolen through breaches of major organizations. Just so you can get a glimpse of a very secure computer, no downloading, no downloading or installing any games, websites would be blocked and the only ones available would be government websites, and all your activity would be monitored by robots and humans 24-7. And to log on, a user would have to type in a 100-word password, whistle a tone, and provide a genetic sample to the hair or a tooth. And personally, I would provide a hair, but for those who wants to go, Hardcore security mode can provide a tooth, but adults, be advised because you only have 36 tries, so use them wisely. We would all think that this system would be impenetrable, but no, a hacker would still find a way to reach and destroy that database. And it's clear because, as Bruce Schneider once said, the former NSA director, a truly secure system is one that's powered off, cast in a block of concrete, and sealed in a lead line room with armed guards. So, what's next? What's next in the future of cybersecurity? What's next in this pressing issue for governments? Well, it's simple. As inventions are patented every month, every week, every day, so are hacking problems. Because hacking was originally a hobby, but now it has been transformed into a profession where you can damage or steal documents. So, the problems increase because exploitation will never go away. Just so you can have some examples, well, the Simply Safe hack, three years ago. Well, this company lost 300,000 customers. And of course, their reputation in millions of dollars. And the Talk Talk company in the United Kingdom, their stock value declined by 20%. They lost 50 million pounds, and they lost 100,000 customers. The Chrysler hack, well, 1.4 million cars were recalled. And we'll never forget the Sony hacking scandal that resulted in millions of dollars of loss for this company. As there's an increase in cybersecurity, there's an increase in cybercrime because the attack is always in front of the defense. And this is why cyber experts and hackers are in a cat and mouse game every day. So what will the government do? On a national level, they will increase their spending from 75 million to 175 million in 2020, and they will add 200,000 jobs in the cybersecurity sector, which demonstrates the great need for more cyber experts. And on a local level, community, what can we do? Well, we can take basic steps. First of all, delete those phish emails and bogus messages that appear on your spam folder every day. Avoid going onto sketchy websites that ask for personal information, and most importantly, do not ask or post for any personal information of anyone. Why? Because hackers could easily make it in that database and steal everything that is yours, including credentials. So, finally, as Leon Panetta said, the former CIA director, cybersecurity may be fought with technology, but it is the humans who triumph. We must invest in the future generations so that they will carry on the fight, they will carry on the burden, and they will carry out the great sacrifice for their country. Because opportunity is just around the corner. So I say, let's take this opportunity and let's create it into a reality, a truly safe and a truly free internet world.